It's Gollum up in here. Look out for Gollum. Ooh, Hi, everybody, and welcome to The One Ring, a podcast. That does not work with the headphones. <laughs> lookout games and all of things you should be weary of. Mm. Weary? Weary? I never know. Let's go ahead and get started. Think, My name is Z Garcia. I'm, I'm Tom Vassell, or am I? I'm definitely Mike Delisio. Hi, how are you doing? You realize what list we're doing, Tom? It seems like you thought maybe this was a horror-themed list or something. <laughs> yeah, that's Gollum, dude. That's yeah, Gollum. Terrifying. Yeah, yeah. that's Gollum. Gollum yeah. is tragic. He just misunderstood. He's Aren't also you, unattractive. <laughs> Ew. Oh, attraction is, is in the eye of the beholder. Uh, so what, what are we going to put that as a timestamp? Uh, you know, I don't know how we're going to label that. I'm so confounded <laughs> right now. All right, what's going on, Tom? What are we talking All about right. today? Yes. Today, today we are talking about Lookout Games uh, and the top 10 games from Lookout Games. So let me get some background as to why we're doing Lookout Games when yeah. I believe I may have announced we were doing Mayfair Games earlier. Yes. And the reason is, is because Mayfair Games bought Lookout Games. Okay. Um, I don't know what year it was in. It was... It was a few years ago, maybe four or five years ago, Mayfair bought Lookout Games. And so when I was putting my Mayfair list together, I realized it was full of Lookout Games, as in many of them. So I said, well, I'm going to make a Mayfair list without Lookout Games, but that would be weird since we hadn't done a Lookout Games list yet. So we're doing a Lookout Game list first. Lookout Games was founded in 2000. It's still going on, although I believe they are now owned by Asmodee, which is a good flip a coin on any company, and sure. that's a good chance. Right. Um, they were not really well known until the year 2003 when they came out with Attribute. That got them a lot of buzz. And then, of course, in 2007 when Agricola came out, and that's where go. they really took off. There we go. Mm -hmm. Atre who? <laughs> right, right, right. So, anywho, anywho, we're going to be doing our top ten lookout games. And I suspect, folks, I suspect that we will have crossover here, and I yes. suspect you will have a lot of crossover. I'm going to go so far as to say, instead of thirty different games, you will only get eighteen. Ooh, okay, wow. that's a good. That's a that's a that's a fun game. Yeah, I think uh, keep track of it too. I may go. I may go under. I may. I may go. 17. I'll go one less. I think we're going to have 17. I'm going to say more. I got I well, to say more. You're the wild card, Z. You're the I'm one not even going to say I'm not even going to say 19. I'm going to say 20 different games. Oh. How many how many designers are going to be represented on this list? I Three. say no. <laughs> <laughs> Correct. Correct. Yeah. That's basically it. <laughs> yeah. I agree. Well, I'm fascinated. I can't wait to see what you guys came up with. All right. I came up with some stuff. And oh. I broke my list down into two parts. One through five are games I like. Okay. Mm. Six through ten are mm -hmm. games I have played, needed more lookout games for this list, <laughs> and settled on. I can't tell um, if you're joking or not. Oh, about 60% joking. I, You know, it's interesting. I'm similar Although there's one game in the lower part of my list I think that I would like more if I played it more. And I'll wait till we get there. All right. There's also a couple games, folks, I didn't put on my list because they're not, they're only Lookout games in Germany. So if you go to Board Game Geek and look up Lookout games, for example, you'll find Suburbia. Sure. Um, but Suburbia is actually a Bezier game. It just happened to be Lookout games published it overseas. So I'm mm -hmm. not counting those games. I'm picking games that, as far as I know, they were originated from Lookout games. There's one that I know is not originally from Lookout Games, but nobody knows. The original company is a tiny, tiny little thing. I'll talk about it in a minute. Oh, uh, well, that may be the case, and that's on my list, and I just don't know about it. I may be in the similar boat. I'm hoping that my mine are all legit Lookout Games, but you can correct me if I'm wrong. My 1 through 5 are games I really, really like, and my 6 through 10 are also games I like because I follow the spirit of making the list. <laughs> Fair. All right. Are you ready? I'm ready. I'm Let's ready. Go. Number 10.
All right. So number 10 is um, a small, I would say a small light game that um, I expected that I was going to like it a bit more than I did, but it is a fine game. This is by Phil Walker Harding, and this is Gingerbread House. Uh, Gingerbread House is a game where you are, there's a little bit of a stacking element, but basically you're trying to kind of match up symbols to, to get different cookies. And it's a contract fulfillment game, essentially, where you're trying to give particular customers certain cookies. And depending on how you lay these little pieces under your gingerbread house, you can get bonus actions and kind of combo things up a little bit. Um, it's clever. It's cute. You have these little stair uh, pieces that will allow you to play stack. Basically, you have to have, I think, three levels to your house. Um, it's, it's a game that the, the one issue I had with it was that I felt like it was a little bit too brain burning. It almost led to AP for as simple of a game as it was. So uh, I know Tom's Who looking at me strangely. Who are you playing this with? Yeah, come I'm on. just telling you, it, it, the game, good. it lasted no, longer. Not get good. <laughs> I'm not listening. The, there were people that were min-maxing the game, which, you know, maybe that was a fault of uh, who I was playing with, but but I felt like the potential was there, obviously, because it happened. So uh, it's a fine game, but not one that I would come back to over and over again. That's my number right. 10. Wait, your number 10 now. is a fine game, but one you wouldn't come back to over and over again. God. Look, I'm telling you, I there were like, what, 12 was... lookout games? No, there's I had to pick the best 10. 40 to 50 of them. Come on now. <laughs> My number 10 is a game I know I'm not coming back to. There, there was an go. expansion. I don't want to play it. There's a core game. I'm done with it. <laughs> this is Isle of Sky. Ah. It's a tile laying game. It is more complex than Carcassonne. Yes. Uglier than <laughs> Carcassonne. Uh, I'd, I'd rather play Carcassonne. Uh, it's okay. <laughs> it's a headier game. Yeah. It's, it's a thinkier game. There's more going on in it. I don't know why this one didn't do it for me it didn't really grab me i, I thought it was fine mm -hmm. i rated like a six i think yeah uh, but there is a decent amount going on in it for it being what ultimately boils down to just a in game mm -hmm. this one has more happening in it than a lot of the you know carcassonne kind of inspired ones because that game did well tile laying uh, you know sure. became very popular and most of them are about as light as Carcassonne, this one isn't. This one has a lot going on in it. Yeah. Uh, the theme is much like many of the lookout games there, but not something that necessarily draws me to that game. So that's not really a thing that's going to bring me back overall. Yeah, this is just not one I'm necessarily going to grab. This is actually one of the outliers from Lookout in a sense. It did really well. It's a very. Mm -hmm. it, it was nominated, or I think it won. The, actually, won the Kenner Spiel in the year. I believe you're right uh but it's not one it's not from their cadre of designers that have done most of their games but um, yeah this one didn't make my list but i think it's fine i probably actually feel the same way about it as z does it's just that i like more games than he does from is it not moment. an alexander fister game uh i think he's a co-designer maybe oh uh, yeah. okay but that was back before we knew who he was so he was <laughs> nobody back then all right because he may or may not show up on my list multiple times True, true to that. That's my number 10. <laughs> hey, my number 10, we already have a crossover. Yes! Which doesn't actually narrow it down much since I just said Isle Sky wasn't on my list. So okay. using your deductive skill, children, uh -huh. you can figure out it is Gingerbread Attribute. House. Oh. <laughs> Attribute. But I really like Gingerbread House. I think Do it's you? a lot of fun. Uh, mm. It's a game that can be played very light. I've never, ever encountered analysis paralysis in the game. I'm telling you, it's, it can happen. No. Well, I know who not to play with, but since you don't <laughs> want to play it anymore anyway, I'm good. I'm so, not the AP issue, I'm just saying. No, I really like this. It, it it feels light, but I like the whole building up your little three by three grid in front of you. In fact, I think Phil Walker Harding has a knack for this style thing. I've just recently played one of his other games at uh, uh, Cloud City. Cloud City. Has mm -hmm. that same similar light vibe to it. Um, and I, I don't know, there's just something about Mr. Harding that where he can just take these games and really condense them down to a few mechanisms. I also like the theme of it. Uh, right. Although it's really weird after a while. You're like, how many people are these witches eating? Right. Right. Doing so, a lot of baking and a lot of eating, <laughs> eating and capturing. They have like their own Instagram. They're mm -hmm. like, look who I'm cooking today. 
<laughs> oh, picture my like <laughs> oh, yeah. my gosh. Expansion idea right there, Mr. Phil Walker Harding. All righty. Uh, yeah. So, my number 10, Gingerbread House. Number nine. All right. So, my number nine, I think, is going to be the most controversial pick on my list. And I think Here it's because go. on both of your lists, it will be significantly higher. Uh, this is one that I feel like would be higher on my list had I played it more. I only played it once, and that is Baron Park. Um, this is a polyomino game. You know, you're laying your, your polyomino tiles. It has a charming theme, uh, although uh, I don't think that the theme grabbed me nearly as much as maybe other people. I think I would have preferred it to just be a theme park, uh, if I'm honest. But sure, we could put bears in there. Why not? What do you but, have against uh, bears? What do you have against Phil Walker Harding, bro? Look, and I just, bears. I just want to say that that bears are overrated as an animal. Uh, as a creature on oh, this planet, that, that bears are highly history. overrated. They've been nothing but rude to me. I've given bears every opportunity, every benefit of the doubt. Uh, but anyway, uh, that's enough about bears. It's a, it's a good game. I have a feeling if I played it more, I probably... But this is a very crowded space. This small to light medium polyomino type of a game and it's hard really to stand out i know most people would put this in the upper echelon i think it's good not great but uh good enough to be on my list that's my number nine baron park on that right. note next week i'll be doing my top 10 polyomino games see if baron park shows up we'll find out mm -hmm. that is definitely a list you can do that now fairly yeah. easily yeah all right my number nine is going to show up a little later on <laughs> oh should i tell you what it is now I guess I um <laughs> My number, nine is, my number nine is Caverna. Uh, Caverna is it? Which one is it? The first? Hold on one second. Guys. Is it Cave versus Cave? Yeah. Yeah, sure. Why not? Cave versus Cave. That's the one. <laughs> Caverna, Cave versus Cave is the two player version of Caverna. Yes. Um, I thought it was interesting. I thought it was a nice condensation, if you would, of the original Caverna game. I, by that same token, I thought the Agricola two-player game was not nearly as interesting as Agricola. Stay tuned to find out if either one of those shows up on my list. Um, so I didn't, I didn't like that translation, basically. But this, I, I enjoyed. I thought it was interesting. It felt like a nice little tug of war. The worker placement aspect of it worked. The game focuses on the rooms that you can build up your, your cavern with, and that works out pretty well. So while not a game that I feel the need to come back to, because there's so many two-player games, sure. this is not one that got its hooks in me that way. I enjoyed my play of it. Uh, I think I played this twice. I enjoyed my plays of it, and uh, I think it certainly could satisfy those folks that are really into Caverna and want something quicker and just a, something that, that's going to fill a little, you know, shorter of a time frame, this will do it. No, so, I'm so Caverna, surprised that this got an expansion. Yeah. yeah. It kind of uh, needed it, though, because this it just is not had showing up on times. my list. What are you talking about? No. There's no Caverna K versus Cave. This is, I like it okay. Yeah, it's not on my list either. It's It's fine. I and may be... or may not have written on my list Caverna at one number and then at another number Caverna and for, <laughs> forgot to denote which one was the uh, two player game. Uh -huh, Got uh -huh. it. Got yeah. it. So, well, so not that is to say either. Caverna, the cave farmers may or may not be coming up. You are spoiling a lot of your stuff on this just one number. I'm, I'm, I'm writing that down. Mm -hmm. All right. My number nine is is a game I don't believe Z has even played, and that is Riverboat. Don't know me like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I do. Yeah, I haven't played that. <laughs> yeah, Riverboat is a game that has an extremely generic theme here. This is from Michael Kiesling, and this is why I wonder that you might like it, because you tend to be a Kiesling fan. Uh, a Kiesling lover. A Kieslingite. Um, yeah. Nice. And, and Riverboat, here you are... Again, you're trying to move your riverboat token around, and you're building these uh, little lands in front of you. And it, it looks like a um, Feld game, frankly. Yeah. And it almost feels like a Feld game in how it plays. Uh, but I like the turn order in this game is extremely critical. It's very unique. Each person in turn order gets a special ability, which comes in pretty handy as okay. the game goes by. It doesn't look like much. 
It looks like one of the 90s Euro games, mm-hmm. but I really enjoy it. My number nine, Riverboat. I haven't played this one, but it, it reminded me just in look of Heaven and Ale. Does it play at all like Heaven and Ale? No, but you know, when I went to the picture of it just now as I was looking at it while I was talking about it, I thought, am I on the wrong page? This is <laughs> Heaven exactly. and Ale. It and does, I was like, right? no, 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 it is yeah. Riverboat. It, it just... It, it was Heaven and Ale before Heaven and Ale was cool. Ah. Also known as both games are pretty boring looking. <laughs> oh, man. Right. Well, you're selling it to me. Yeah. <laughs> That's all I'm about. Right. Number eight. All right. My number eight is a small box card game uh, by... Um, Ben Pinchback and I think Matt Riddle, the guys that did Fleet, if I'm if I'm correct. This is Peep Mott's Little Songbirds. Um, this is a really clever little game. It, it plays quickly. Basically, what you're doing is you've got this little bird there, right there. There it is, upside down, but there we go. Now we're putting those birds right side up. This was Birds Before Wingspan. Um, it's and it was small... no birds before Wingspan. <laughs> well, no, no, birds Elizabeth Hargrave, from my understanding this of is a... biology, invented Correct. birds. These are uh, pre-Wingspan birds. It's true. It happened. Um, Dinosaurs. Yeah, it's a, it, right, exactly. It's a real simple game where you've got this little bird feeder and, and these seed cards above it, and you're trying to play birds out to these perches to get those seed cards, which are scoring, and also you putting sets of male and female of the same breed birds in front of you for scoring. And there's a pretty clever play where you're placing cards out and depending on the strength, they may bring cards back into your hand that you could play. It allows you to kind of do these combos. So pretty simple, but there's some nice little decisions. Um, I think it's a game that's fallen way under the radar and uh, maybe you should get a little more attention. Uh, Peep Mott's Little Songbirds is good. I have not played this one yet, so oh. but I, I want to. That's why it's behind me. I have played it. I reviewed it. It would be my 11, I suppose. Mm. That's not saying too much on this list. No, it's really not. <laughs> on this list, 11 is the kiss of doom for you. Yes. No, that's You're my 11. 12. I'm like, Let's not oh. talk about 12. Mm-hmm. Anyway, my number eight is, uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, my number eight is the one that I know for a fact did not come out first from uh, Lookout. It is from like a museum printed it originally. Mm. But nobody knows that, I it think. It belongs this is, oh in a my, museum! This, oh My Goods. Uh, ah, uh-huh. Oh My Goods, the original title was something else. Much better title, I forget what it was. Now. Yes. Uh, uh, I yeah. still dislike this title. Mm-hmm. A lot. Yeah, it's so lame. So really lame. Is. But anyway, I, I remember I got this from that little booth, which was a museum. They published a couple of card games for some reason. And then look out, whoop, scooped it up, and they reprinted Um uh, it's a nice push your luck card game, uh, much like uh, Peep Matt's is, is that style of game. But this one has not flown under the radar. This one's gotten a lot of love, and there's been a bunch of expansions. This has gotten a, a decent amount of uh, attention. It even got a, a board game spinoff, if yes. I'm not mistaken. Right? Expedition the Newdale, to Newdale. Mm-hmm. Newdale game, yeah. Mm-hmm. I haven't played that, but I've played All My Goods, and I think it's a nice little card game. Um, I know Tom likes it a lot. I'm, I expect to see it on his list. Stop but, telling people my list. Talk about your own list only, sir. Here's what's going to be on Tom's list. Caverna. That's coming up, okay? <laughs> uh, expedition to New Face. Uh, <laughs> to New oh, Face? Oh, my face. <laughs> oh, my face. Anyway, oh, my goods. My number eight. My number eight is a game that I initially gave a six to. Um, and as time has gone by, I think at this point, I've raised it to a seven. And if I have the time... It would be an eight, if that makes sense. What? No. Um, well, like, the you game... have to go change it? The rating? No, 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 no. I don't mean that. I mean, it is a long game. And I'm oh, I know what it really is. in the mood to do that. And that would be The Colonists, or yeah, just Colonists, yeah. I guess. Colonists is a engine building game that is really quite long. Um, mm-hmm. It plays over four different time frames. In fact, they say, hey, you, you could play this game you know, just one of those eras, but it doesn't really work because each one builds up to the next one. Right. You know, so each one, you know, you're doing some stuff. And if you just played the first one, I think you would feel, well, I know, because I played just the first one and it felt, it didn't feel like a complete game. You play okay. through all four and it's like, whoa. So 
I, though, keep wanting to go back to this. I keep thinking about it because I like a fulfilling engine building game. Mm -hmm. And I like how this one has just so much going on. Now, I did see that there's like an expansion for Fifth Age, which is, uh, I believe it's called Colonist Insanity. Um, I think it's called Colonist Overnight. Is that actually true? No, but it should be. Because <laughs> mine was a joke. But <laughs> Oh, that's great. How long is this? How long does it ultimately end up being? On the box, it says 30 to 360 minutes. <laughs> now, that is not the truth of it. With three to four players, I think you're looking at four hours. Okay. That's still a pretty hefty game. Yes. What? Why include the 30 to whatever? Right. Like, why even put that on there? I think because if you play a solo game and just one era and you skip most of the things, it's 30 minutes. Looks like it takes 30 minutes to set up. I mean, based on what I'm Maybe seeing. Maybe that's what they but, mean. If you set up right. a game but don't play, 30 minutes. If you play, <laughs> right. 360. No, 360 minutes. <laughs> yeah, I think they... I don't know. I think they added, like I said, I think there's an expansion that adds more to it, but I don't I don't know. Like I said, I never did that. But the thing is, I keep wanting to go back to this. I really like the idea of this one. Maybe I'll play it mostly with two players because it's not going to take as long with two. What's but, so appealing? Is it the generic theme or is it the unimpressive artwork? What What is the thing they want you to keep I think we got to be really careful. If we're going to talk on Lookout Games about unimpressive artwork <laughs> on any point. one of them, we're that's criticizing all of them because Clemens Franz is basically hired by Lookout. I don't yeah. know if that's true, but he definitely does a good chunk of their artwork. Yeah, it does fit some games better than others. But yeah, you're right. You are. Here's the thing. I've always thought Clemens Franz's art is really good from a distance. And I don't yeah. mean that in a negative way. No. But I mean, when he Sounds does negative. boards, Jeez. it does sound negative. <laughs> but when he does a board or like little people all over the board, they look good. Or yeah. even on a card. But the covers... They blow them up, and I'm like, nah. Like, oh! Nah. I think that is the problem. I think when yes. they put covers on these games, they actually do stretch a smaller Correct. picture, right? Mm -hmm. I think they do. It's unfortunate, yeah. but I think that's how they do them. So, anyway. Anyway, my number eight, Colonists. All right. Number seven. Okay, so my number seven may be a cheat because I'm afraid that this probably was not most known as a lookout game. I'm I'm wondering if it's an Amigo game. You guys will know. I, I My number seven is Bonanza. It is not a lookout game. Ah, all right. Well, I'm cheating, but I'm 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 going to talk about Bonanza came the... out before Lookout was even a company. Come on. Okay, well, I should have I should have known. I, I I had a sneaking suspicion, but look, I got to go through. I got to follow through with this. <laughs> Just do it. Just Bonanza dive in. Is Go for it. Famous bean trading game where the big hook is basic. What are, you, what are you shaking your head? No, I don't even have the game right. Look, I'm letting you go through with it, oh, but I, okay. I have to disapprove at some point. Oh, fair enough. That's good. Give me, yeah, give ahead, me that, that, that disapproving. You know, the, the big hook of Bonanza is that you can't rearrange the cards in your hand and you have to, you know, do that hand. That's truly hand management. You know, a lot of times people will talk about hand management. That's very literal. You cannot adjust the order of the cards in your hand and so that that constraint was something that was very um novel to me the first time i played bonanza and other games have kind of tried it but i still think this is the game that is most looked for for that particular mechanic uh an earlier uve rosenberg game in which he went on to much larger known games and bigger games that we'll be probably talking about on this list so my uh, lookout games yeah. invalid number seven pick is Bonanza, a game that was known for... The whole list is now broken. Am I right, though? Is it Amigo? Yeah. Ah, see, I blew it. Oh, well, I should have known. This is great. That means now I can put whatever I want on here. <laughs> That's fantastic. All this right. My list. number seven is Ticket to Ride. <laughs> <laughs> All right, no, well, my technically, number... So technically, I think Lookout did put out a form of Bonanza somewhere. Yeah. Well, they did. That's why Mike stumbled on that, but... I'm assuming that's why you got that, you know, because you yes, saw it on the list. It but, is. Um, it is. Yeah. Yeah, it's like so. It's 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 older than they are. Uh, anyway, Caverna is my number seven. And this is the regular Caverna, the cave farmers. What with the donkey and the and the uh, cuddle room and whatnot, <laughs> the infamous cuddle room. Um, this is a big one. This is much better, in my opinion, than Agricola for me. Agricola is not going to show up on this list. I find this to be a more interesting balance. This one lets you do 
What is going on right now? Look at this water <laughs> delivery and everything. What's going on? Uh, dr- uh, Caverna is quite dry. So you might have to have water <laughs> delivered to you. <laughs> when someone uh, even just speaks of it. Correct. Okay. Anyway, I'm going to let Tom talk about Caverna a little bit later on. So uh, there you go. That's my number seven pick. All right, my number seven, and someone just came in in a chat and said, what's the definition of a lookout game? We're talking about the company in lookout. Although I could see how that could be confusing. In this yeah. game, you're watching out as criminals rob the bank. <laughs> Look out! Uh, my number seven is Grand Austria Hotel. Okay. Uh, Grand Austria Hotel, also with Clemens Franz artwork. But I like, this is a dice drafting game which i tend to really like um i also like the theme of this game as silly as the theme is you know where you have these people and you feel and you if you give them the right combination of food they stay at your hotel because that's how hotels work sure (laughs) you go to the lobby you eat at the restaurant i'm like what here's my you know i'll pay for my food they're like your room number is 256 i'm like well (laughs) hang on a second i did not realize what i was buying (laughs) it's it's silly but the only the only thing is I won't play it with four. I will flat mm. out refuse to play it with four because it's a snake. Um, it's a snake movement. So at the beginning of the game, if you're playing with four players and it's me, Mike, Z, and Suzanne, it would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I'll go first and eighth. Mm-hmm. And the, oh. the time in between that is quite long. Yeah. yeah. Um, so this is actually one of the first Luciani games I played. Uh, and I really like it. Uh, it's, a, it's weird that it's only five years ago because it feels like a much longer time frame. It does. It really but does. But I really, I really do enjoy this one. But again, with the caveat, won't play it at four. Hands. Three, I mean, I will. I will straight out review of. Yeah, three is fine. Two is best. Grand wow, Austria okay. Hotel. I've seen this game. I, I did not realize that two was the way to go. It doesn't look yeah. like that kind of game. No. It yeah, doesn't. it's. It's not so much that two is. I mean, it, it's a. It's a really fun game. And I don't even mind a four-player game if I could, like, watch a movie when it wasn't my turn. Like a rude person. Like a rude person. <laughs> like, yes. Want to say it. Say it. <laughs> no, say it. No. You want to do it. I won't. I shan't. I see it drippingly <laughs> on your tongue. Brand Osprey Hotel, my number seven. Number six. <laughs> well, I feel comfortable with my number six pick because it's a crossover. Uh, it's a crossover with one Mr. Z Garcia. And my number six is Isle of Sky. Okay. Um, you know, yeah, he the said thing, he didn't like it, basically. Yeah. Well, I like it enough for it to be number six on this list. Uh, it wouldn't be number six on most lists I do. But um, the thing I like most about this game is not the tile laying. Honestly, I, I'm not a he- that, that That's to me pretty generic. But I do like the setting of prices at the beginning where you're kind of setting what your costs are going to be for those tiles. That to me is interesting. That's the most fun decision I have in the game. Unfortunately, that's probably not the biggest part of the game. The biggest part of the game is setting up those tiles for scoring possibilities. But I do like that little kind of setting the prices auctioning. Um, that's fun. I like do like that blind bidding mechanic. Um, I'm with you in that the theme is there uh, and sure. it's fine, but it's certainly not anything that's going to, you know, excite me, uh, the art the same way, but it's very popular. Um, and it's a good game. It's just not something that I will be playing very often. Uh, so that's my number six Isle of sky. What is this? Like a, a, the price is right. TV show. Yeah. Indeed. You're playing Isle of sky. Oh, yeah. Hey, I'm just, that's, that's building tension. But you had already set the title. Oh, Let's not get caught up in the details. Z. That's building. Why? tension. Number six <laughs> is a game I doubt either one of you two hooligans has played. Maybe, maybe you have, I don't know. This is quite an oldie from Alexander Fister, and it's a game called The Mines of Zavendor. Oh, boy. This one, yeah, this don't has that so cover. so rude. Have you played this? I have played. The Mines of Zavendor is actually the original, in my opinion, engine building game. The OG, that's what I was about to say. Mm -hmm. I was about to say the OG engine building game. You hooligans, get off my well manicured lawn. (laughs) OG EB. You've played this, Mike. Have you played it? Of course you have it. 
You don't. You I can't tell the difference between one. Amigo and uh, Lookout. Okay. I'm so, already <laughs> paranoid about my number five. Yes. No, I have not played this one. Now, the Minds of Zavendor is a pretty cool, uh, like Tom said, engine building game in which you are you're gathering cards. Basically, it's like a if you like tracks mm-hmm. in games, or like you advance this track and you advance that track. Well, this game has like tracks on cards. And so you're gathering cards, and then you're paying, gathering gems, paying those gems to move up on these tracks, unlocking things. There's also a cool central one where you're going to be moving down this sort of snake path or up the snake path, I forget. Um, and that's kind of like the clock in the game. Now this I played many, many years ago. This is, I think, from the list here, the one I've played the longest ago. Mm. But I remember really enjoying it. I've, I rated it well. I... I I enjoy just uh, I, I remember enjoying just getting into it and being able to adjust those little paths you take uh, as you are playing through the game and where you invest your time in. Oh, I'm going to pursue this thing. Oh, that kind of clogged up a little bit. I'm not getting those gems. I'm going to go do this thing for a little bit. So I really enjoyed it. I never played the other Zavendor games. From my understanding, they were either a little heavier or a little less interesting. But this one, The Minds of Zavendor... I really enjoyed it. Uh, right. It's well, super just, hard to get. But. I lied. I lied here. I played the Scepter of Zavendor. Ah. I've not played the Mines of Zavendor. The Scepter yeah. of Zavendor is from 2004, which predates Z's game by six years. So Ooh. That one I have not played. I, uh, I understand it's, um, like I said, I think it's a little heavier. No, this it is one. heavier. And that one's also been completely replaced by Race for the Galaxy and all those, all that jazz. Okay, okay. This because, one's good. This one's lighter. It's quicker. It's got that Alexander Fister. You know, he's pretty. He's not as. Um, like Phil Walker Harding can really condense something down, right. but the Ultimate game isn't as deep as like an mm-hmm. Alexander Fister game. Alexander sure. Fister will condense to a degree, but his games are deeper. They got more going on. That's how this feels. Anyway, I recommend it. If you can find a copy of it, which is might be hard, it's it's a good one. It's not a looker. Uh, but it's I don't a good think game. that's the theme of this list. No, at no. all. No, even even by I mean, some of these games look good. Mines of Zavendor is very brown, is what I'm saying. Yeah, it's a lot of like yeah. just brown. And- all right. My number six is a crossover with Z, and that is Oh My Goods, Ooh. which originally when I heard the name, I didn't want to play the game based on the name. I just it bothered me that much. It was just oh, a stupid royal, name. Royal Goods is what it, it was. Used to be. Royal Goods, yeah, That's yeah. Right. Much better title. It is. But I actually didn't like it when I first played it either, because they have actually since I played it, they tweaked the rule. Somehow mm-hmm. I got convinced to play it again, and it made all the difference in the world to playing that yeah. game. Mm-hmm. Uh, because when the game originally came out, it was play. You built buildings. As mm-hmm. the game goes by, but you could build a bunch of small buildings and rush the end of the game. I couldn't see any way around that. They have fixed that right. uh, because the big buildings, you never would build them. Uh, now it's become a game I, I think quite highly of. I have not played through all. There's a lot of little expansions, uh, yeah. like a story expansion. Mm-hmm. They they honestly should just come out with like a box set of the thing. Well, I maybe be they did. They did. I wouldn't be surprised if they do. We'll get to that more higher on the list. <laughs> but uh, my number six, oh my goods. Number five. Okay, and here's my second game that I'm relatively sure now is invalid, and it's by the same designer. This is another Uwe Rosenberg game. And uh, Napoleon uh, Bonaparte. No, no, it's not. It's La not, Isla uh, Bonita. Not, it's not La Isla Bonita, although that's my favorite of the pun titles for the Bonanza games. Uh, no, my number five is Patchwork. Is that good? No, Patchwork's fine. Yes. All right, good. Two-player uh, puzzle game, another polyomino game. Um, the To me, the, the best part of Bonanza is the kind of that economy of of the using time as a, as a bit of a resource and getting those buttons. Um, it's, Except Bonanza, uh, I, by the way. You, you meant Patchwork. I meant Patchwork. <laughs> I'm so frazzled at this point. I'm Don't so be frazzled. scared, okay? How many more yeah. times could you possibly be wrong? Five? It's okay. Uh, no, four, because I said I'm a good on this one. You're but right. I feel good. You're right. I feel, feel pretty good. Patchwork is my number five. And, uh, yeah, it's it's a good two-player. I don't play a lot of two-player games. 
Uh, but this is one that I feel like has a really nice time versus depth of decision ratio. That's a great thing for me is that where if you're playing a game for 30 minutes and you really feel like you've made meaningful decisions in that 30 minutes, that's what I'm looking for in these types of games. And Patchwork does that about as well as any, where every single turn, you're not agonizing, but you're making meaningful decisions. So I really think Patchwork is, uh, it was the first, I think, of his kind of polyomino explosion that he did, where then he came out with that trilogy, you know, Cottage Garden. It's still his most stuff. popular one, it, frankly. It is. And it's also probably, I'd say this is at least as approachable as any in that trilogy of games, the, the Cottage Garden, Indian Summer. So it's a very teachable, easily teachable game, approachable game. Uh, the theme might throw people off, but I like the theme just fine. So my number five is Patchwork. Oh, I think the theme's great. Yeah, the theme's yeah. good on this because it makes sense. I mean, right. it works out well. Buttons and patch quilts. Uh, the you know, patches, for, patches for the quilt. Yeah. Right. All right, my number five, uh, we haven't mentioned yet. I don't think it's going to be on anybody's list. I don't know if anybody... I, this this one doesn't get a lot of love, unfortunately, and it's from the two player line mm. that uh, Lookout has, which is a great line, I think. This is a game called Trambon, mm. and it is a bit like Lost Cities, maybe. In mm -hmm. it, you are collecting sets of cards. You are going to be. Um, it's a little bit of an obtuse, both theme and play. It takes sort of. What's it called? Your head it's called Trambon. 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 Oh, that's a piece of garbage. <laughs> you just like that one? I, I really like do. Nice. Here we go. Yeah, I like it. I like it. I think it's good. I think it feels kind of like it's a Lost Cities. It's like Lost Cities, but bad. It's like mm. Lost Cities, but... That's uh, on the box, right? I don't <laughs> yeah, it used to be quote. on the first printing. <laughs> but then they removed Tom's quote uh, <laughs> for the second printing. They were like, oh, no, wait, this, this isn't a positive. <laughs> this seems counterproductive, yeah. Uh, I like it, Tom. I think it's interesting. I, I like the card management in it. I like the uh, time pressure in it. I think it's good. You are always like a game barrels towards towards the end point much more than a lot of these other games. And I find that tension good. It's like, man, I don't have enough time to do everything I want. I like the um, you have to get these, I guess, carts, right? I mean, the trains or whatever. You have to get them and uh, put them in front of you to multiply to you know double up your scoring your multiplication but they start getting snatched up and you cycle through them really quickly the hand management is bizarre but it works in an interesting way i like it uh but i know that's not a popular opinion so i think a lot of people do agree with you tom that this one just either was unloved or overlooked so well, I mean, look here on, on bgg it's ranked 1370 which isn't that bad really yeah right uh the ratings there are a lot of sevens i'm 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 no i'm in the lower end i'm in the lower end but also it's not being sold anymore so i was right cool cool Trambon, number five number uh five, five for me i just talked about oh my goods so then right at there it is expedition and newsdale okay. which is essentially the board game of oh my goods and i like it a little bit better i like the board movement you know you're moving around the board and it uses a lot of the same engine they had this whole campaign nonsense in there as really well a little bit of that you know you can play through it whatever it's well they did it with the card game remember the expansion yeah. right yeah 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 okay but this is one i have way, not played and i would like to because i think I, I think i'll like it ah, it's yeah. in the library just go grab it we just organized the library. Someone's got to use it. No one else is using it. Please, there's like four library cards right now. <laughs> fine, fine. I'll go. I'll go touch the library and mm -hmm. take things from it. <laughs> All right. Anyway, uh, there's not much more to say about it. It's a pretty cool game. It really did get lost in all the Essen releases from it last did. year. It did. It really uh, did. But um, Expedition to Newsdale, my number five. Number four. All right. Well, number four is our first triple crossover. Bwee, 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 bwee. Oh, my. My bwee. goods. You got it, baby. <laughs> Come on, number four. Be a little bit more subtle. Is, oh, my goods. Number four, yeah. 
Uh, I really, and, and Tom, I'm really glad you mentioned that rule change because that's what raised the game in my estimation as well, was that you could really start to take advantage of those production chains because that's what the game is essentially all about, is building up those production chains and getting that really satisfying turn where you can see them all go and all of that chugging along of this is going to convert to this, is going to do this, to do this. That's what the game is all about. And the rules as written originally you're right. It ended too quickly. You'd be building, 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 and then it would just kind of fizzle to an end. And now it's gotten to the point where you can really kind of get a couple of those good, satisfying production turns. So very small game. I do wish the rules had been a little bit more clear, a little bit more. Uh, it was more complicated sounding than it was when you read the rules. So uh, they've gotten better over time. I think they've updated them as printings have, have come out. But I think it's a really solid small box card game that gives you a nice... Uh, experience in the time you're playing it. So that's, oh, my goods. Oh, my. Are you keeping track of how many games we've talked about, Tom? I think we're I think we're going to pass the, my number at this point mm-hmm. because I know mine is not going to be on your list. It's the next one. Anyway, just go ahead. It's, I, yes. Yeah, I'm just yeah, marking down each time you guys say when it's not on my list, and then I'll add that to my 10. Therefore, that's the final number. Mm-hmm. I'm winning, is what you're saying. <laughs> yes, you're winning. Say, say I'm winning. There you go. I'm winning. <laughs> That's what you told me to say. Tricked me again. Mm-hmm. My number four is a crossover with somebody. I forget who said it already. Mike, I think, said it. Uh, Baron Park. Mm-hmm. I like it much better than you do. I think it's a great game. Again, Phil Walker Harding is a master at doing what he does. Mm-hmm. And this one is a good showcase of that. This is one that. I think it should have gotten more love than it did. It's one of the mm. best polyomino style games out there. I think of all the uh, praise that went to um, uh, uh, what's his Egyptian themed game? Um, oh, Imhotep. Imhotep. Imhotep got a ton of love. Yes. I think that's a decent game. I think Baron Park is better, and it did not get as much love. Sort of, you know. There were some production gotten, issues, I think, that played into that too. I think that when it was most wanted, it wasn't available, and I think that that's hurt true. It. Yeah, for a while there it was really hard to get. That's true. Mm-hmm. Um, this is one where I have not played the expansion. I'm mm-hmm. not sure why I haven't played the expansion, but I haven't. But the game, even the core game, is solid. It's um, maybe the replayability is a little on the flat side, just out of the core box. You'll, sure. you'll, you'll have seen everything kind of little plateau after a few plays, but I still really enjoyed this. Especially, I remember my very first play after my very first play of this, I rated it a nine. I really, really Ooh. liked it. It settled because, again, mm-hmm. I think the curve wasn't there, the, the replayability. Right. But uh, I really enjoyed it. Great game. And of this style, one of my favorites. My number four, Barn Park. Barn Park. All right, my number four is, like I said, I don't think this is a game that's going to be on on y'all's list, but I really like this one, and that is Murano. Oh, and I have to, I have to, I always get confused because there's Burano and Murano. They're very different game. Uh, Murano, though, has a mechanism. The main mechanism, the game is about building different things in the middle of the city and all that jazz, but the main mechanism is moving this boat. It's like a giant rondelle. Mm-hmm. And I'm not a huge fan of rondelles per se, but when they're big, I like them more. And that seems weird. Well, when they're little, you're doing the same actions over and over again. Right. The big one, you're going around this big board with the boats, and you have multiple boats and things like that. Okay. Um, I like the theming of it, the canals. I was really surprised. I went into this one expecting to not like it. This is done by the brands mm-hmm. who have one of the most di- – other than Vlada Cavato. I think they're the most diverse gamers out there. Yeah, they've made very much. They've made everything. You know, mm-hmm. they this is a heavier Euro game. It's not heavy, heavy, but it's it's definitely not light either. And it's one that I, I think is a lot of fun. Murano. I've wanted to play this one. Yeah. I think I played this one. This is a really colorful one, right? Mm. I think I played this with Kenny actually. Um mm. and I remember it being all right, but yeah, I didn't make my list. I've only played it the one time. I just didn't make enough of an impression where I remembered it. But uh, I agree about the designers. They are always just, they, they bring everything to the table. Yeah. They're usually good, no matter yeah. what they're working in. Yeah, it's wild. Number three. All right.
right. So my number three is from a designer that is well represented on this list, not only on mine, but also on uh, you, you, you gentlemen's list. This is a game that I think is um, flying under. We've been talking about some games flying under the radar. This is another one that I think is it's an Uwe Rosenberg game. And this is Noosefjord. With the um, oh, you were gonna say fishing. Hangus because I was about to beat you up. <laughs> no, no, no. Hangus yeah, no, is on no. nobody's top ten list unless we're no. talking about top ten vast disappointments. Yeah, that was a huge. Oh man, what a bomb. Um, but uh, Newsfjord is actually a, a quite good game. It's it's interesting in that it's a it's a a regular big box game, but it mm-hmm. plays more quickly than some of the other Uwe Rosenberg uh, worker placement games. It, it uh, It's a really snappy game. Um, and and to some people, it maybe is over too quickly, but I think it's perfect. Uh, it has a smaller scope in the type of, you know, almost always you're going to have cards that you can draft in an Uwe Rosenberg worker placement game. And this has a smaller uh, array of cards. So you don't have as much at the beginning of the game that you have to kind of account for. There's not that huge info dump at the beginning of the game as you oftentimes have in his worker placement games um and so it, it's uh, i think it's a right really nice medium weight game that plays quickly that more people should try if you like uve uh, rosenberg worker placement games or just worker placement games in general you should try it out this is not the two-player one no no this it's is... uh one to four i think this is okay i i like it i feel like i'm cool I, I mean, I, I cooled on it instantly because it's another, mm. like, the next Rosenberg. Sure. It has a really weird fish mechanism in it. Oh, I love the fish um, mechanism. Fine. You fish gotta, like, mechanism? Feed, you got to feed people fish, fish, but in a very specific way. And it has stock market in it a little bit. Oh, it's like, just like, kind of like... Give like, them the plane? Here comes no, the airplane. What do you mean? There's a serving. There's a serving dish. You've got to place the fish on the serving dish. Tom, you know, if Tom had his way, you'd be just flinging fish everywhere. You could just feed somebody a fish by throwing it at them across the table. No, you've got to place the fish on the nice silver fish, the the, ta- the dish, and then you can feed them. The dish because or the fish? fish. Okay. Uh, on the dish, yes. That's the civilized way to feed people fish. But, Green eggs you know, and fish. Got that's it. That's correct. I mean, I, I understand Tom doesn't doesn't appreciate that, but that's the way it should be. Cool. Now, um, <laughs> wait, wait, say this again. Um, the fish on the dish. The fish on the dish. You can't miss. Stays mainly on the plane. <laughs> the pellet with the poisons and the vessel with the pestle. Uh huh. Oh jeez. Okay. Right. Eat, Got eat your fish from the dish. All right. My number three is uh, another game that I think a lot of people don't care for. I don't think it did that well. It's another two-player game, and that's a game called Fight for Olympus Mm. from Matthias Kramer, who I think is underrated generally. Uh, This one feels to me like uh, it has that vibe of a collectible card game without, of course, all the trappings that that brings to the table. But I've always been a sucker for that kind of game. I've always enjoyed... Good ones, okay? Uh, mm. Games that feel like collectible card games. You have a bunch of characters, a bunch of whatever types of cards. They have abilities on them. But the game, of course, is self-contained. And is a tug of war, or is a, an area control game, whatever, what have you. This one is, like it says in the title, a fight. You are using these cards to duke it out. You use the cards themselves to pay for other cards. So it has that, you know, San Juan race for the galaxy thing where you are discarding cards to pay for others. I like the theme. It works out well. I like the powers on display here. Uh, There's some interesting ones. It's not the same old thing you've seen in every card game. So I enjoy this one. I find it captivating. Again, I think a lot of people just never played it or didn't enjoy it. But uh, this is one I own. This is one I like. I'm very happy with it. So Hmm. fight for Olympus. I seem to remember Tom said this one is like Race for the Galaxy, but not good. Is that is that what I? No, I <laughs> I said that this one was okay. I, this is it feels like a CCG, but it's almost too sterilized for me. Mm. Almost too. <sighs> There's not enough. I don't know. They they like lost the cool factor. All right, my number. Where are we at? Number threes or fours? Yep. Threes. Three. Number three. All right, it's our next triple crossover. All Except right. This time. I like it more than Z, not much, but way more than much. 
and that's yeah. Baron Park. Yeah, I, I do. love Baron Park. Great, great polyomino game. Uh, once again, showing that Phil Walker Harding can take something really simple and just, I mean, here we have a list where there's a lot of Uwe Rosenberg games on it, and yet I think that Phil Walker Harding has done a better job in this genre than Mr. Rosenberg has. Mm. Cold I, as ice. I, I would drop a mic if I could, but I, I don't <laughs> know that that's a thing I can do right now. But yeah, mm -hmm. it's a lot of fun. Um, and I like the theme a lot. I don't know what Mike is talking about. The bear theme is just amazing. Eh, it's all right. It could have been right. any animal. I would have. Correct. I'm going to make a top 10 list of ten, top, ten, top 10 games I'd rather it be than bears in bears. Right. That's right. Yes. That does sound like one of my stupid top 10 list <laughs> ideas. <laughs> ten Number nine. I think Polar the bear bears. park thing is really cool. The only thing I don't understand is I still don't understand why it's called Baron Park. I know. I, I, it, when the they, expansion. Yes. Yeah. Just put it, maybe make it English. I don't understand yeah. why. I mean, when it came but out in German, fine. It's German. It's but. called Baron Park. The bad news bears. <laughs> right. That, yeah. That's that doesn't make any sense at all. If, yeah. I mean, if they uh -huh. would have said Baron Park and then some more German words after it, you yeah. know. <laughs> it's like one, one of those weirdly, uh, like, accidental snootiness things that right. I think people who are gamers just don't see anymore. But, like, someone who's not a gamer looks at this and it's like the bad news bears. I know what that is. This game's called ba Baron Park. What is that? Right. You know what I mean? Like, come on. Right. Yeah. Just sounds snooty and weird. Mm -hmm. Number two. All right, so my number two is a game that I do like, but if I'm honest, I don't play it very much anymore. It's this high on my list because of its importance to the hobby and because I did enjoy the many, many plays I had, even if I don't choose to play it anymore, and that is Agricola. The uh, in many ways, the the Cheap. kind of well, look, this is this is the game that I think made worker placement the, the the behemoth that it is now. I mean, you have multiple worker placement games that come out consistently. And I think that it's not the first worker placement game, but it really is the one that I think showed kind of where this type of design space can go. Um, Wait, did it sound and, like I was calling you a sheep? That's not what I meant at all. I mean, I said sheep they're oh in this yeah game, there are sheep there are a lot of sheep in this game <laughs> yes there are sheep um i mean no that's what i meant sheep cows oh. horses though you are a spineless follower <laughs> but but not a sheep no but not, not a, a sheep, sheep. That's and a definitely not a, definitely not a, a bear um uh, if this yeah. game had bears in it i'd be out it'd be number 55 but um no, Agricola <laughs> is a very, very uh, important game to the hobby. It's still a game that people play and, and enjoy. Now, a lot of people play this game to a level that I never will, where they have all of the different cards and they get I, I never got into all that. I, I played, you know, base Agricola. I didn't add the expansions. I didn't do any of that other stuff. Um, but I still appreciate the brilliance of the design the the agonizing you know feeding your family situation is something that it, it could be awful and wonderful in the same breath because it's you know it, it forces you to to make some agonizing decisions so i still have a lot of appreciation for agricola even if i don't play it much anymore that's my number two agricola yeah for me agricola is just one i played i thought it was okay even then there's other mm -hmm. games i've been resistant to like because they get so much hype I Give into but, the then, hype but then yeah. I do play them, and I'm like, fine, I'll give into the hype. That happened with Brace for the Galaxy, happened with Dominion, didn't happen with Agricola. After mm. I played it, I was like, mm, no, man, what? No, I'm not <laughs> seeing it. I think Caverna did was a much better Agricola. Mm. All right, my number two uh, is, again, a two-player. Uh, we're on twos, right? Yes. Yeah, number two is a two-player card game. The newest game, I believe, on this list for me, and that is Mandala. Mm. Mandala is um, very much like a, I guess, not really, not really Lost Cities, but more uh, shot and totten, I guess, you know, or battle line. But you're going to be playing these square cards to a couple of different places on the board and eventually hoping to score some of them for yourself. 
you can play to a shared space in the center that you're going to be dividing or on your side where you're going to be fighting for strength. If you're winning in strength, you get to take stuff from the middle. There's also a really neat aspect to it in which, depending on the colors you take and the order in which you take them, the cards are going to be worth more points to you. Uh, so the very first color you take is worth a single point per card. But if you can wait to take something much later that's worth a lot more, you also are likely to take fewer of them because you've waited that much longer. It's neat. It's The main thing I, I walked away with thinking was this game felt like one of those timeless classics, even mm -hmm. though it was a brand new game. I think it came out last year. And I appreciated that. This is really neat. It's also got a cool um, fabric board. This really, really like. moved up high for you, though. Like, that's <clears throat> pretty high on this list. I like it a lot. I think it's a great game. Um, yeah. Yeah, I like it a ton. I think it's, a, like I said, it feels like a classic. It, it, it should be the kind of game that you speak of in the same breath as, you know, like a Lost Cities, that kind of yeah. game. It's that kind of game. Okay. I need to play this. I need to play it. All righty. My number two would have been... Well, actually, it would have been number one. In 2008, it would have been Agricola, just like Mike, you know, here. But it's Caverna. Caverna just completely replaced Agricola for me because it had more freedom. And that freedom was a big deal. I get some people like Agricola. They like that there's a different hand of cards. Agricola definitely has more variety than Caverna. But I can, I'll give that up to not deal with the gut wrenching. My people are starving every single turn, sure. and we can barely feed ourselves. Caverna subverts that and lets me do a lot of other stuff. It also lets me pick one strategy and stick with it, rather than saying you need a little bit of everything. Yeah. Which, after playing Caverna, I go back to Agricola and I find that to be grading like i need every animal i need a little bit of this a little bit of that mm -hmm. why can't my farm just be the carrot farm if i want my if i want a carrot farm i'll have a carrot farm no mm -hmm. you won't you'll lose you you can have a carrot farm but you're gonna lose in caverna you can have a <laughs> carrot farm i built huge vegetable farms in caverna before i've been the sheep mogul and the donkey queen <laughs> let's Fair. stop there while i'm ahead um you're not ahead caverna. No. <laughs> it is my number two. Super fun. And finally, number one. All right. So there's definitely a trend with my top three. Uh, number three, News Fjord. Number two, Agricola. Both worker placement games. My number one is also a worker placement game. I'm a big fan of this mechanic in board games. And this is Snowdonia, which is a game that the people that like it, like it a lot. And I'm one of those people. But I don't think it's as well known of a game as it probably should be. I think part of the reason is the theme, because it's train themed. And that can be very, you know, Ticket to Ride gets away with it because it's such a family-friendly, colorful, easy-to-pick-up-and-teach game. But I don't think people play Ticket to Ride primarily because of the theme. And I, I think that some people won't play or haven't played Snowdonia because it's about trains. But it's really clever. The the, the way that the uh, there's bag building in it, it does a lot of things that a lot of people may, may, maybe even don't realize. You've got bag building in there, which is really clever in the way you pull cubes out of the bag, and you have to kind of mitigate that and, and do some uh, planning. The, the way that the cards have weather on them that can affect how you can move along this track and mo remove rubble, which you have to remove rubble before you can move along the track. Uh, it's, it's got some really clever systems, but it's not terribly complicated. I feel like it's a pretty elegant design, quite honestly, and it's a very variable design where you can play, the, the, your track is made up of cards that go around the outside of the board. And you could just play with a different deck of cards that's going to give you a slightly different experience with the same core mechanics of the game. Mm. So much so that they recently re released this massive Snowdonia master set, which is, you know, the size of a board game table, this box. And I don't really know that I need all that much Snowdonia, but I like the base it's game. It's in the library. And Check it out in the library. I'll, yeah. Do it. I'll, I'll, I'll get a forklift and do that. But, um, <laughs> 
I, I, I've played the base game and maybe two or three of the expansion decks. They're just literally decks of cards. And yeah. I've really liked uh, what they've done. So Snowdony is a game that I think should get a little bit more love than it does. All right. I haven't played this one. Mm -hmm. Well, I played, um, I heard that Alubari, A Nice Cup of Tea, is a very similar game to it. And I really did enjoy that. So mm. I feel like I like Snowdonia. Okay. All right, well, my number one is indeed a crossover with uh, one of you, I think. Yeah, just one of you. Okay, with Mike, right? Uh, and that is Gingerbread House. Wow, no, you're number on one. My, list. my number. I was on my number ten. Yeah, we both had it at ten. Except oh, okay. I said I liked it, and Mike said he had to do ten. I there we go. Fun. So crossover uh, all the way around. You guys both had it at ten. It's my number one. Yeah. Wow. Um, and I actually debated, Tom. You said Mandala's quite high. I actually debated making that my number one. Mm. And having gingerbread I can't believe they're, <laughs> You know, these Rosenberg fans are going to show up and be like, what? Right. None of his games make your top? <laughs> There's people that have heart attacks everywhere, Z. <laughs> sure, sure, sure. That's okay. I'm, uh, I'm okay with that. Gingerbread House is about baking it up, having fantasy creatures wander through your woods, and they are your woods, mm. and capturing them with various sweets. So that you can fatten them up, cook them, and kill and eat them. Yes. This is, of course, all done in a quite lighthearted manner. But the game is truly, at its core, an evil game. It's a game yes. which um, <laughs> you should be careful if you allow this kind of game into your house, is all I'm saying. Correct. So look into Correct. it first. People are preaching against it. <laughs> Don't let that gingerbread house burn Not in my house. In backyard. No, I like Gingerbread House quite a bit. It's light, but it's uh, it's engaging. I don't know. The, the AP thing, yeah, maybe. I could see it a little bit, maybe, Mike. But um, I found it to be really engaging. The way the different creatures come up, that theme is mm -hmm. cutesy. So it gets yeah. me in the door as well. And I like it. It's it's puzzly. It's interesting. It does a lot with very little. So sure. I enjoy this one quite a bit. Gingerbread House, my number one. All right. And one of the lesser surprises here... My number one, I am mm. covering for you Rosenberg fans, mm. La Havre. La Havre. La Havre. The Harbor. Mm -hmm. The Harbor. <laughs> yeah, let's not go down that route again. <laughs> uh, yeah, I just really like this game. I, I, I enjoy it every time I play it. Um, I, You know, sometimes I look at my top games and I say, if that's a top game, why do I never play it? Mm -hmm. You know, that you have to occasionally reevaluate that. You're like, I like it, but almost at a distance. That's not the way it is. Every con that I used to go to, um, I play La Havat somewhere along the line, usually grab some people, play it. Uh, I love those new geek bits for it are fantastic. I just, it feels like there's different options. It's one of the three games I can teach without looking at the rule book. Um, wow. So that's pretty good. That one of the great. others, that's, that's it's great. that, Apples to Apples, and um, Bloomhaven. <laughs> yeah, can you imagine? I don't, I'd have to be really good at Gloomhaven. To be I don't think Isaac Childress can do that. <laughs> uh, All right. So anyway, I have my favorite lookout game. So before we jump off here, folks, what are some games that you think we should have had on here? You're surprised not. I already saw someone mention Feast for Odin, but that's a Z-Man game. Which right. Which is why that, I make my list. And also that would have been my... That would have been my number one. Feast for Odin would have been my number one. Wow, really? Okay. Yeah, oh, absolutely. I'll play that over Agricola every time. Wow. Uh, yeah, I feel like they're very... They, like Agricola, Cavern, and Lahav are like in the same grouping, even mm -hmm. Orin Labora. Feast for Odin's a very different game. It's it more is. It's replacement to its core, which you which said you Which one is the, the two-player one that has a bunch of peat in it? That is... Oh. Um, F uh, Fields of Arl. That's a good game, too. Uh, Not a lookout. Far a lookout? I don't think it no, is. No, it's Z-Man. also Z-Man. Right. Same with Glass Road. That's also not a lookout game. Right. Right. We weren't doing a top 10 Rosenberg game. <laughs> although right. sometimes you put them in. Yeah, some people mentioned there's a lot of 1800 games from Lookout. There are, yes. Um, and shockingly, right. we didn't put any of those. Neom, I did not really think was that great of a game. I thought it was good, but it had those disaster tiles, which I really disliked. Mm-hmm. 
let's see what other games. I, I mean, we. It's not like look at it has a humongous catalog. So we've they mentioned most yeah. of them, and I believe we hit either nineteen or twenty different games. Okay. But we okay. did have three triple crossovers, which is pretty impressive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think Lookout as a company is pretty uh, specific in their flavor that they push out, yes. you know? Yes. There's kind of two things, I would say, about them. There's those Uwe Rosenberg or, you know, like the, the crunchy kind of games. And then this new two-player thing, which has really mm-hmm. become a, a big part of what they do. You right. know, Agricola two-player, Caverna two-player, Mandala and Trambon and Fight for Olympic. Like, they have a lot of those. That sure. two-player line... It's kind of taken over for the OG Cosmos two-player line, mm-hmm. I think. Well, it's also very telling. Mayfair bought Lookout. When mm-hmm. Asmodee bought Mayfair, they took the Mayfair name and were like, <laughs> and then they're like, but we'll keep Lookout yeah. because yeah, it's that true. strong of a name. It's definitely, like Z said, I think they have two main lines. They have the big Euro games, right. and then they got that strong two-player line, which is sometimes even a riff off their games, Agricola, um, Caverna, they've done the two-player versions of the bigger games. Oh, was There's I muted for a minute there? What's going on? You just said exactly <laughs> what I said, like a minute ago. Well, that's true, but maybe you they, were correct. They feel more Wait. like a boutique line to me, almost. Like, even their new games feel like kind of the old-school European kind of, you know what I mean? they got kind of that boutique feel to them still. Would you so. say that they have, like, two strong lines, though? I would My, say they have... To, I would say they actually have two strong lines. Okay. Uh, kind of a two-player. Yeah. <laughs> right, two-player line. Yeah, they, they right, have, right. like, the heavier games, yeah. Right. They do have that whole bear line, though, and I just... That's the just not for games, me. Yeah. Well, the right. rhyming animal games, you know, <laughs> fish on the dish, bear on the stairs. I gotta uh, say, though, Mike, when bears gain sentience, I'm not your friend, okay? What do you mean, I, gain sentience? They're sentient animals. You do know... <laughs> Intelligence, how's that? Okay, you more bears intelligence, dumb? fine. <laughs> and they show up at your house, Tom, right. uh, uh, Mike. They knock on your door, they're like, what's your beef with us? Right. I've seen enough videos of bears inside vehicles to know that they're pretty intelligent already. So, Have you ever seen a bear, like, driving away? Like a getaway vehicle? What do you mean? <laughs> not a stick. Getting... They could do uh, automatic, I, but they're I, not I, quite well, uh... topic here. All right. Well, thank you, everybody, for coming and watching us do these top lists. We got other videos that have just gone up and stuff – hour or so ago more going up now check out our stuff we'll see you all next time until then i'm tom vassal see you i'm mike felicio take care everybody